the thumbnail for this video is not clickbait Richard with Martel will beat Nevsky Joan 100 of the time under normal conditions with the best in slot gear does that mean that you should start using Richard with Martel in open field PvP absolutely not and today we're going to be talking about the rise of kingdoms battle formula and everything that we know about it but first what's going on guys cheers i want to remind you i'm doing a giveaway for the month of august there's going to be a link in the description below all you have to do to enter is click that link and follow me on all social media platforms it is literally that simple and that's it okay so today we're going to talk about the rise of kingdoms battle formula how damage is calculated and i'm probably going to regret making this video because i suspect that it's quite long and almost the entirety of this video is going to be reviewing formulas which means we're going to be talking about math and if there is one thing that the average person doesn't understand at all it is math which means i'm expecting a lot of people with a room temperature iq to put a lot of negativity in the comment section below but if that's not you and you're here to learn then just put a smiley face in the comment section below okay so when we talk about the damage formula for rides of kingdoms what are we actually referring to well there's a few different things that we have to calculate first of all we have to calculate the stats and numbers of troops involved in both sides of the fight and how those stats are amplified by the commanders used as well as the equipment and armaments and all other buffs involved then we have to use that information to calculate a couple of other things first of all there's the normal attack and counter attack damage that occurs every single turn this is the white numbers that you see out in the open field as you're fighting a barbarian or another player we also have to calculate skill damage which is typically done by a commander's active skill and then there's healing factor and shielding factor and then on top of all of this there is the rage system which is how much rage you get per turn depending on the circumstances and finally we have to calculate how many severely wounded units are occurring on both sides of this damage calculation as each turn is passing and then we will know the outcome of a given battle now this is all for 1v1s but you also have to take into account aoe damage and how that aoe damage is dealt and reduced based on the number of targets that it's hitting now that is a lot of math and luckily for us there is one individual who has compiled the best possible information for all of these formulas and put them all together in one place and that is none other than speco the developer of the rock battle simulator now a lot of you love the rock battle simulator because it helps you test different commander pairs up against other commanders in different scenarios to see how they might perform in the open field and a lot of you don't like the rock battle simulator because it's not in game testing but as we've already discussed in this video everything that happens in the world of rise of kingdoms is just a math formula on the back end and i know that a lot of players don't understand that or maybe they refuse to acknowledge that because they don't really understand the formulas or they think that there's some sort of magic sauce or some impossible to calculate variable on the back end or maybe deep down they just don't want their immersion broken but today we're going to go over the best known formula for everything that we've talked about in this video so now let's take a deep dive into all the hard work that speco has done to bring us what is arguably the most accurate calculations that we have for the rise of kingdoms battle formula speco says first off i want to thank everyone who has supported me it really means a lot it definitely motivates me to keep improving the rock simulator due to the rapid growth these past few months there's bound to be members who are curious how the formulas work and whether they are legit and i think a lot of you watch probably feel that way and I've certainly seen your comments trust me I never claim that this simulator is perfect but my goal has always been to get it as close to in-game as possible while I am confident in the formulas I inputted I am most definitely open to feedback and with a growing community now there's definitely room for improvement in the accuracy department I'm a believer in more heads are better than one and this is true there have been multiple commanders that I have given Speco feedback on just for my own observations. And he has reviewed his work, confirmed that things aren't quite right and actually fixed them really, really fast. So Speco is very in tune with what is going on. Let's start with the base formula for calculating damage factor here. He says, I also want to thank Wick gaming for many of the videos he has posted in the past on theory crafting and explaining in-game mechanics. His past videos have aided me tremendously in regards to the building of this simulator. 
he is missed by the rock community i agree wick we miss you bro i hope you're doing well if you see this comment down below i'm curious to see how you're doing then he links a video by wick gaming with the reference mark of 234 so let's go ahead and take a look so here we have the formula that was present in wick gaming's video posted all the way back in december of 2020 this is right around the time where the rock community first started to really get to the bottom of how the battle formula is actually calculated so here's the formula that he is using for the rock battle simulator we have the damage factor of 200 is equal to the number of troops multiplied by the total attack divided by the opponent's total defense and that entire thing is divided by the opponent's total health that entire thing here is multiplied by the damage factor multiplier which is multiplied by the square root of the troop capacity divided by the current number of troops now he goes on to say that there are two very important unknown elements of this formula which I don't think anyone knows for sure the first is where I labeled the damage factor multiplier which is right here it is set as two in Wix video but this yields a higher damage result when compared to in game after having ran numerous tests in game in the past and comparing results to the sim it is currently set at 0.6114 whether or not I fine tune this again in the future will be determined the second is the rock paper scissors between cavalry infantry and archers how does it correlate with the base formula if you pit infantry units against cavalry units under equal conditions infantry wins as shown in the thumbnail below this is the image that he has here we have cavalry versus infantry both have the same commander with no talents no stats anything like that and they're both using markswoman which is neither cavalry or infantry and you can see that the cavalry do actually lose here even though everything is identical and this is again this is an in-game screenshot currently in the sim this troop counter relationship is dealt with by adding 0 0.03 to the damage factor multiplier that is this number right here or this number in the formula if the troop counters the other and deducted if the troop type is weak against the other so this is influenced on both sides if both troop types are the same the damage factor multiplier stays the same whether or not I fine tune this again in the future will be determined okay so that is how the damage is calculated in the simulator but what about skill damage so let's take a look at what speco says for skill damage he says having the damage factor of 200 is important this is equal to one attack and one counter attack and since typically in one turn you attack and counter attack a march you are roughly doing around 400 damage factor without all other calculations since we have the damage factor of 200 calculated we can calculate the skill damage of each commander for example, El Cid's famous warrior, which is his active skill, does 1000 damage factor without a relic, which basically gives you a base formula of add in skill percent increases, and then the total direct damage equals the direct damage multiplied by this skill percent increase divided by 100 and then you add the direct damage finally you apply the skill damage reduction from the enemy march which can come from things like the loose formation talent for example it says reduces skill damage taken by nine percent here we see speco is actually implementing things like this into the simulator which is very accurate and very good so you get a final skill damage equal to the damage factor of 200 multiplied by the total direct damage divided by 200 and that entire thing minus the damage factor of 200 times the total direct damage divided by 200 times the enemy skill damage reduction divided by 100. All right, there are variations to this formula since we have some skills that count as additional skill damage. Juge's Marquis Zong Wu ignores the skill increase part, and then there's Artemisia who likes to self inflict skill damage on herself etc then he links a screenshot here and in the screenshot we can see that El Cid does a normal attack to the barbarian and they lose 516 units then El Cid also launches a counter attack in that turn and the barbarian still loses 516 units then on the following turn you can see El Cid casts his active skill which remember has a 1000 damage factor and the barbarian loses 2607 units here speco says take note that this El Cid has an empty talent build and is five zero 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 damage factor of 516 when casted active skill damage of 2607 there also might be a range on that direct damage factor but it's about five times an attack or counter attack with a damage factor of a thousand and remember that makes sense because we're arguing that the normal damage factor is 200 so you would expect that a 1000 damage factor active skill would be five times what the normal attack and counter attack are which is roughly what we see here we would expect the skill damage to be about 
2580 and we actually see it's 2607 so it's off by about one percent here's a note that he left it says please take note that there is a margin of error with the skill damage I have tested the numbers with various talentless commanders in numerous situations and it's either a bit higher or a bit lower than one attack and one counter attack times damage factor of 200 but it's more or less around that range I honestly don't know how Lilith programmed the calculations for this they could have put a random range on the skill damage produced and I think that that is pretty reasonable to assume so okay here we're seeing that Speco is admitting that the skill damage calculation for the simulator is off by a very small margin next we'll talk about the calculation for healing factor and here we see that there are two screenshots that are linked we have Cao Cao's 1000 healing factor and we have Richard's 600 healing factor at 1111 with a 10 percent heal increase from his fourth skill taking a look at the screenshots we see the healing factor from Cao Cao is 1879 and we know that his troop capacity at that time was 164,706. and if we take a look at the Richard screenshot we have a 1013 healing factor and his uh, current units were 110,087. so here we have the formula for healing we have the healing factor multiplied by the square root of the troops remaining divided by the base health plus the health iconic okay so that's the number of health stats you get from iconic uh, equipment then if we have a healing factor increase like for Richard's example we have the heal amount which we calculated before multiplied by the healing increase divided by 100 plus the heal amount so in the Cao Cao screenshot we see the square root of his units uh, that we see here equals 405.84 and then we have 1000 which is his healing factor okay multiplied by the 405.84 divided by the 216 that is the base health of a non-specialized cavalry unit and we get 1878.9 which if you take a look at the screenshot is basically what the in-game actual healing was so that's pretty accurate then we have the Richard screenshot we have the units remaining for Richard which is down here the square root of that is 331.79 now we have 600 which is Richard's healing factor at one skill point multiplied by that square root which we calculated here divided by 216 which is again the base health of a non-specialized infantry unit and the final outcome is 1013.7 which is 1013 that's pretty accurate from what we see in game next we have to calculate the shielding factor okay and he says that Pericles makes testing with shields easy because with two skill points on his active skill he has a shielding factor of 400 which is just twice the damage factor of a attack and counter attack which we talked about before and the tier four infantry units have 184 base health plus 104. then speco shows his work with a screenshot of pericles's active skill at two skill points damage factor of 400 for the shield then he shows a screenshot of the infantry uh, stats and he also shows a screenshot of his battle log and this shows us the glory of Greece shielding factor okay he says the formula for shielding is very similar to healing except that it's base health plus the bonuses so the shield amount is equal to the shielding factor times the square root of the troops remaining divided by the base health plus the iconic points that you get for health plus the bonuses which is the green and number that we see in the screenshot which is right here which is 104. let's analyze the report from the links and plug in the numbers for Pericles so we have square root of 153,366 which is the number of troops that he had in the battle report you get 538.3 and then you have the shielding factor of 400 multiplied by that square root divided by 291 which is the base health plus the green number turn 11 we took 922 turn turn 12 we took 382 turn 13 we took 916 damage so on turn 12 that was the turn where there was shielding factor we should have taken 919 damage let's take 919 minus 382 and see how much we absorbed 537 absorbed on turn 12 which nearly matches the 538.3 with some margin of error okay so this is the amount of shielding factor that was calculated by the simulation right here and this is the amount that was actually absorbed in game so you could see that it's off by about a point but I would say that is a pretty accurate example here we have another example here the testing with 
Heracles as well so square root of units remaining is 84.5 we have the shielding factor times that square root and then it's divided by the health plus the green number the absorb happens on turn 12 and 13 and if you take that average it totals about 140 damage absorbed and that is exactly what was calculated with the simulation formula as well so everything aligns up now he does leave a note here that says compared to the healing formula the shielding formula divides by a higher number due to the bonuses that is the green number okay because it's on the denominator you're dividing by a larger number which means you will result in a smaller number okay you are shielding for less than if you were to heal so if our health percent bonus is higher does that mean we also shield for less technically yes which is a bit odd okay that is weird that if you have more bonus health your shields will be less effective than if you had healed instead so super weird stuff there next I direct messaged speco for a little bit more information first of all I asked him is he confident in those in those formulas and have they changed in uh, the last month since he posted those updates and he says it hasn't changed you can read it again although the heal and shield I'm fairly certain it is accurate the skill damage and base formula is around 90 to 95 percent accurate next he says that the rage mechanic that he uses for the simulator is more or less implemented exactly like wick gaming's video explains it I believe the video that he's referring to is wick gaming's rage limit video which we can take a look here he actually spends about 15 minutes calculating the base rage for your armies as well as what happens if you lose and rage compensation which is the amount of rage that you gain on the losing side if you guys didn't know when you're fighting somebody if you're on the losing side of that battle you're actually gaining more rage to compensate for that which is a cool little mechanic mechanic a lot of people don't know about that he also talks about talent trees and summing everything up okay I'm gonna link this video in the description below because I'm not gonna take an entire detour to explain everything about rage and how you gain rage every single turn etc etc and then he also talks about over raging and how there is actually a cap with the amount of rage that you can gain for any given Earn. all of that is calculated in the rock battle simulator and again if you want to watch this entire wick gaming video it will be linked down below next he says that the sev formula is very similar to an easing function which he then links for me which is nice because I have no idea what that is but you can see with the link that he provided me that it is pretty much just an exponential increase here over time and the math function is linked down below so if you guys are curious to know sort of how exactly he's calculating per turn the sev wounds on both sides this is something very similar to the formula that is implemented into the rock battle simulator here he says I compare the damage done per turn by two marches the percent of damage one March does related to another determines how many sevs are created if two marches do roughly the same amount of damage to each other the sev wounds are about the same this is his actual in-game testing okay and I think that makes sense if the damage output on both sides of a battle is the same then the amount of sev wounds that each side should take should be about the same if a side does most of the damage between marches meaning if one side is outputting a ton of damage on a single turn it will deal more sev wounds that's logical and the easing curve which is what he linked above represents this the farther right of the curve the higher the curve goes up that's represented by this graph here it is exponential okay the bigger the difference in damage done on a given turn means that you'll have much higher sev wounds done during that turn the higher the curve goes up representing the sevs being created relative to the percent of damage done between the two marches I don't believe anyone knows the exact formula of how sevs are generated but after much testing I got it very close with this if one March deals over 50 percent of the damage between the two marches do the following math.pow 2 comma 9.75 multiplied by the percent of damage done for that turn minus 10 plus 0.118 if the March deals less than 50 percent of the damage for that turn the number of converted sevs is equal to 11.8 percent of the damage that they did and then I just asked for a little bit of clarification because I didn't really understand what this was but this was just part of the actual formula itself so the rock battle simulator takes all of those formulas and puts them in one place and calculates all of that data for every single turn of a simulated fight and it factors in the skills from the commanders all of their talents whether they're on the map or off the map whether they're in a rally or a garrison whether they're in kvk or whether they're in your home kingdom or even Ark of osiris with the latest update it takes into account the amount of troops you have the civilization the special unit 
the buffs that you get from your buildings alliance holy sites city skins runes kvk tech armaments buffs from your equipment the item buffs the iconics it even takes into account your vip level as well as other things that you can modify manually such as your normal attack and counter attack damage as well as an all damage bonus it takes into account relics it takes into account reinforcements for rallies it takes all of this into account with the best possible known formulas for everything and it does the math is that math identical to the math in rise of kingdoms no but is it within a five percent margin of error i would say probably if not it's pretty close so what does that mean for you and me who use this simulator well if we are using it and again there will be a link down below to the discord server for this simulator where you can actually get access to it there is a patreon involved but what this means is if you are comparing two armies let's say for example a nevsky with a joan compared to a richard with a martel if one side beats the other side by let's say a greater than five percent margin across let's say 10 20 30 battles well then there's a very high probability that that army is going to beat the other army in 1v1 fights in rise of kingdoms which is why when i test a richard martel against a nevsky joan under normal conditions with best in slot gear and the talent trees we have full skill tree on nevsky and this talent build down here for richard you will see that in every single test the Richard wins against the Nevsky Joan. This is every single time. This is not clickbait. This is literally math. Why is this happening? Well, if you've been paying attention for this entire video, you will know that first of all, the normal attack and counterattack damage on any given turn for Richard Martel is going to be slightly higher than Nevsky Joan because we have a higher counterattack damage on both of these commanders. Richard has a counterattack damage bonus on his second skill. He reduces the damage of the enemy on his primary skill. He also reduces the damage he takes by 5% on his expertise. And of course, everybody knows that the fourth skill of Martel gives him 30% increased counterattack damage as well as the damage bonus on the active skill. We also have shielding factor and healing factor between these two armies. And in a 1v1 scenario, shielding factor and healing factor is OP. It is broken. It is the best thing to have when you are dueling another player, regardless of the actual army composition. So even though Richard Martel is typically not a good PVP army, because they have a high healing factor and a high shielding factor they are pretty much always going to win a 1v1 the enemy would have to be dealing significantly more damage than the Richard Martel in order to counterbalance the damage that they're not taking when the shield is active and the damage that they're healing with the healing factor on Richard and this is why when I released my Pyrus test video a lot of people's minds were blown when the Martel Pyrus beat the Nevsky Joan. That is not shocking. That is exactly as you would expect in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, I said in the video, does this mean Pyrus is good? No, it doesn't. And you guys are going to be really heartbroken to hear this. This is going to be very shocking, okay? The reason I picked Martel Pyrus for the thumbnail of the video is because it's clickbait. I knew that Martel would win because shielding is OP in 1v1s. So I'm never, and I've never made the claim that Pyrus is better than Nevsky or Pyrus is OP or Pyrus is better than Joan of Arc Prime. Okay. I never made that claim. I simply showed that in a 1v1, Martel Pyrus would win against a Nevsky Joan. And that's not shocking. That is not groundbreaking, but it doesn't mean that he's actually good. It just means that it's a really good thumbnail for that video. And anybody who understands the formulas that we've talked about in this video knows that that would be logically the outcome of that battle. Now, I would say the biggest concern that players have with the rock battle simulator is that it doesn't simulate AOE damage. Okay. And that is honestly true, except it actually does now. In one of the newest updates to the rock battle simulator, Speco began coding in a new mode to test AOE effectiveness and tanking of multiple marches. And this is a really big update to the rock battle simulator. Is it perfect? Far from it. But let's take a look at how Speco has implemented AOE effectiveness to make the rock battle simulator as accurate as it's ever been here you can see this symbol for the multi-march test mode 
the number two through five represents the amount of marches with the main march included in this count so the main march in this scenario would be either the richard charles or the nevsky joan depending on which army is being surrounded the soldier riding the horse icon here is the swarm direction icon this represents the direction of the swarm activate the left side and the marches will be attacking the right side activate the right side and it will be attacking the army on the left side and if you guys have never seen the rock battle simulator for whatever reason this is how it's set up you have a left side and a right side now i haven't downloaded the latest update for this so mine might look a little bit different but that explains the left versus right side the 200,000 represents the troop count of the swarm marches which you can see here you can set this from anywhere from a hundred thousand to almost a million and the swarm marches are tier five siege now speco has confirmed with me that the reason he picked siege is to just put neutral troops into the battlefield right because you're never going to be able to calculate you know if you're being swarmed by two cavalry two archers and one infantry or are you being swarmed by three infantry one cavalry and you, you, there's just no way to know that right so the best that he can do is implement a certain number of neutral units into the equation here in speco's own words he says since the swarm marches are taking damage from the march that it's tanking them i wanted the counter attack to be neutral to give a fair representation of how much aoe damage the tanking march does with their aoe skill damage the mode was really meant to give more insight on the potential of a commander not just from a 1v1 setting since aoe is so heavily favored it showcases how much damage an aoe march can potentially deal hitting their max number of targets they can hit aside from a med that i tuned down to three because his aoe cone is garbage okay which is funny he basically said that you're you're pretty much never going to be hitting five targets with Mehmed. that's his own personal opinion and i think it's pretty fair i think his his cone is very narrow it's unlikely that you would hit actual all five so he put it at three that's up for debate if you care about that i honestly don't really care here he said that the siege armies don't deal aoe themselves they are just fodder to measure aoe damage or other things like xeno buffs mulan alex's shield to a friendly and stuff like that he does confirm the siege armies are actually dealing damage to the swarmed target they also raise the rage of the target that they deal damage to and remember we talked about this earlier when we referenced wick gaming's rage video there is what's called rage compensation so when you're being swarmed you gain more rage that is now implemented into the simulator as well especially if the target has talented skills like plus six rage when attacked by a march etc and this is one of the reasons that attila takeda was so famously not uh you shouldn't be swarming it right because it gets a lot of rage and it pops off the active skill all over and over and over again here he says they have no talents they have base stats of 93 attack 93 defense and 51 health 220 base attack 216 base defense and 212 base health these are the stats from your city and research these are the stats of the units themselves they deal skill damage though i think i set it to 1400 damage factor and they gain around 150 rage per turn so if you sim with joan prime and the swarms are her friendly marches two of them will gain plus 20 rage per second for three seconds and plus five percent all damage after she uses her active skill this is really detailed guys he goes really in depth with the implementation here i'm actually super impressed your main marches also get surrounded bonus effects like extra two five ten fifteen percent all damage depending on the march even though it doesn't show in the battle details page like surrounded 2x 3x bonuses and stuff ysg deals 15 percent less aoe per extra swarm attacked and so on now here he does confirm that sev wounds are not currently showing in the battle reports with the aoe feature but he will implement it in the future this is as you can imagine an extremely tasking uh, undertaking for him okay he had to go through all 70 commanders that are implemented in the rock battle simulator and make sure that the aoe works for all of them it's actually insane how much work he's put into this but what that means is as speco continues to improve the simulator we are going to get a better and better idea as to how good aoe actually is in rise of kingdoms without actually testing it in specific game modes now i will say at the very end of this video 
that yes it is better to test in open fields and nobody is ever going to claim that the simulator is 100 accurate it just can't be we don't actually know the formula but we can get really close and i think speco has done just that so hopefully this video has helped you guys understand the mechanics of rise of kingdoms how damage is dealt how damage is shielded how damage is healed how rage works and hopefully it has cleared up some confusion as to how the rock battle simulator works so that way you know that if i'm showing you the rock battle simulator or if you're using it yourself that there is a small amount of error within that formula but it is really really good and the reason we know that is because it's just math it's all math everything in rise of kingdoms is math so you can decide if you want to trust the rock battle simulator moving forward or not but i for one am convinced all of the math that he has done is now completely transparent to all of you and he has shown in game where it matches up almost perfectly with the most controlled possible settings that you can achieve in rise of kingdoms and this is a really good thing especially for free to play players low spenders new players and even whales we now have a way to test commanders in in some cases before they even come out to get an idea of how good they actually can be we don't have to rely on feelings i feel like justinian is doing well in the open field quite frankly i don't care if you feel that he does well i actually care about the math because a lot of things people can't control you could say oh well he did really good in my kvk and then if you do a little bit of research you'll see that that player's anecdotal evidence is because he was going up against a c seed kingdom and everybody was trash and to further prove my point uh, the testing that we saw from chiskel gaming i'm gonna link it down below but he did a live stream where near the end he did some open field testing for Justinian and the test results were really underwhelming. And that literally matches up with the test results that I shared in my Nevsky Minamoto versus Nevsky Justinian video that I posted just a couple of days ago. If you missed that, go ahead and check it out. And I'll also link Chiskel's video down below. But we also saw when Drugo Leon came into Rise of Kingdoms, the pre-release test results that we got from the test that I did in my video were very accurate with what we saw from Zhuge Liang when he first came into the game. So we actually have real world data of the simulator being accurate. And now that we know the formulas behind everything and it's all laid out for you and it's all transparent, hopefully you will have more confidence in that data moving forward. And if anything changes with the simulator and I feel that it has become less accurate or it's not good, I will be the first to let you know, I promise. But at the end of the day, whether the formula is done by Rise of Kingdoms on the back end where you don't see it, or it's done in a spreadsheet, or it's done by the Rock Battle Simulator, math is math it's going to come out the same no matter what with that being said guys if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment down below your thoughts on the damage formula and everything we've talked about in this video as well as how well the rock battle simulator has implemented it i would love to know what you guys think about that and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video another quick reminder of my giveaway the link will be in the description for the month of august and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace